I'm gonna make three bold predictions for the year 2100, which I do plan to see. And uh, some of these will seem like a big learning curve on the way there, but when we get there, we'll look back and go, God, what did, what did we ever think? What did we ever think? Now, my first prediction is that, um, it comes from an observation I made early on during the pandemic. When I heard we might be locking down for six months, a year, maybe even multiple years, my first thought was that people are gonna be so unhealthy when they come out of it. They're gonna stay home, drink Corona beer, and uh, eat a bunch of junk food. And um, a week into it, I quickly noticed a trend. People who ate unhealthy ate even more unhealthy, and people who ate healthy or had other healthy lifestyles uh, got to really, really practice those healthy lifestyles. So for example, for myself, I was getting over binge eating disorder at the time. And I find that I binge eat a whole lot less when I was in isolation. And the reason for that is because I could actually focus on my food and um, immerse myself in it. And I can get done with it quickly without having all this extra binging. So for example, one of the reasons I've been hesitating on visiting my family, aside from pandemic issues, is that um, I uh, sometimes when I go home, my, my mom especially these days, she eats even healthier than I do. And I'll be eating something and she'll be complaining about how, how I'm binge, binge eating or eating uh, too much of whatever. And you know what? I really can't enjoy my food when I'm eating in an environment like that. And what happens then? Well, I have to eat more to get the same enjoyment out of my life. And um, that's a big problem. But here's the thing. A lot of people think it's their, their uh, right, their freedom to eat whatever they want. But I, you have to wonder uh, what are what's the outcome of, of eating all this junk, right? So... In our generation, we've had all sorts of um, school shootings and violence. And I always thought, I, I always thought there, there, there's no way somebody who eats a holistic diet would get involved in that. My first day here in Phoenix, where I'm living right now, uh, I was walking through several different neighborhoods looking at uh, housing. And it quickly dawned on me that... Um, uh, first of all, people here in Phoenix are not very conscientious about littering. But some of the better neighborhoods that I went to, people littered healthy stuff, right? You, you got some uh, banana peels, you got um, shells from different nuts, and, um, and then you go to the not-so-safe um, neighborhoods where you might expect to hear a gunshot or two at night, and then you got cigarette packs, you got uh, chips wrappers, Doritos wrappers especially. And it makes you wonder if um, some of that junk food is causing some of the violent behavior. And I suspect, I suspect decades from now, we'll look back and say, how, how did we ever allow people to eat that kind of stuff and then to go to our schools and shoot it up? I know, it sounds very futuristic right now. And I suspect, I suspect 100 years from now, it will be really frowned upon to do any of that. It will, it will be the equivalent of smoking today, at least. Uh, when you're when you're eating a bag of Doritos, people are going to worry that um, what are the uh, societal implications of that? I mean, we already worry about it in terms of our healthcare costs, right? But I think in the future, we'll worry about it in terms of our mental health issue and um, how it might lead to violence down the road. I, I really do. I really do. I, I really think it's weird that people haven't seen the connection yet. We see a school shooting and we treat it in isolation from everything else that's going on in that person's life. I mean, we might talk about bullying, but we've never talked about what the person is putting into their body. Junk food, prescription drugs, uh, among other among other problems. Okay, so 100 years from now, be really frowned upon to, to uh, not take care of your body because it will be seen as a threat in terms of uh, the mental health effects. Now, getting to... Uh, in uh, the financial markets today, the Feds uh, are going to think about how many basis points to raise interest rates by, and a lot of people are talking about safe havens, especially precious metals. But you know what? A hundred years from now, I suspect that gold is going to be one of the most abundant metals around because we're actually making, we're actually consuming 
a lot of the other metals, especially the base metals, the rare earth metals, and te technologically uh, important metals. I recently bought a bunch of bismuth, as you guys saw in some of my videos, so I turned some of it into some jewelry, and I bought a couple bars of indium, and I'm thinking about some of the uh, lanthanoids and actinoids, and so what else did I think about? Uh, Beryllium, because that's going to be used in, uh, I haven't bought any yet, uh, I, I want to see if there's a more stable form to buy, uh, because that's going to be used in some of the nuclear reactors, uh, I think RTGs especially are going to be the future, uh, because you'll be able to charge up a car battery of RTGs, and it will last four months without having to be recharged or replaced, yeah, I think most people could do a maintenance every four months, or we already do with our uh, uh, gas guzzling cars, right? In the future, it will just be to, to go recharge your RTG. So I suspect 100 years from now, we'll see gold being used for everyday objects and um, some of the more exotic elements or even some of the elements we take for, uh, for granted today like aluminum and copper, those will be the actual precious metals, right? Um, or even silver uh, or uh, platinum of uh, I think gold is uh, going to be very cheap, but everything else is just going to be precious, right? Uh, and uh, the base metals even more so because we aren't doing a very good job at recycling them. Now, as much as we li like to talk about uh, pride in terms of sexual orientation, I suspect, I suspect that a hundred years from now, people who are straight are going to join the ranks of the LGBTQ community and the main sexual orientation is going to be solo sexuality. I really do. Because as, uh, as soon as people start coming out of the closet as solo sexuals, which is a lot of people, think about it. 50% of marriages end in divorce. Even more marriages uh, don't involve a romantic relationship between the, the couple, which is good. You got two solo sexuals who have a close friendship who can live together. I, I suspect. I suspect, as it is, more than 50% of humans are solo sexual. I think part of the reason we have this artificial population explosion is because we don't let solo sexuals come out of the closet. I do uh, private tutoring, and I have one student who thinks uh, we should have a female president in our lifetime. We should have some uh, presidents who are LGBTQ. And I said, well, what do you think about a president who is single? And he, do he didn't realize that... You, uh, he, he thought being married was a requirement to be president of the United States, which is really sad that we live in a society that could that could believe such a thing. Anyways, I thought I would make some predictions for the year 2100, which I do hope to see because I think things will be a whole lot better if some of these predictions come true.